as we asked last week, that you would help us to learn from you, help us to learn about these women and their strengths and their weaknesses and what we can um, gain from their being in the Bible. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, class two today, the matriarchs. Oops, the matriarchs. Mm -hmm. So, we know that the patriarchs of the Jewish slash Christian faith are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they are our physical and spiritual ancestors, physical for the Jews, spiritual for us, and of course, to be an ancestor to anyone, it takes women as well as men. <laughs> so to be, a, to, to be a descended, you need a matriarch as well as a patriarch. So, Briefly, <coughs> the history. Abraham was born Abram. Oh, yes, question. Oh, hi. Come on in. Well, there are two chairs right over there. She's up here. Very nice. Thank you. So we're just getting started in our second class, and I'll, at the end of the class, if I forget, let me uh, remind me to show you how to get access to the video for the first class, um, and I'll show you up on the screen so that you can see the video and get the notes. Um, so we were talking about matriarchs as opposed to patriarchs. We've got we've got men, we've got women. <laughs> and so um, briefly, I am um, going to go through some history. Abraham was born Abram in about 1800 BC. The one true creator God talked to Abram, and Abram worshiped him, and that's a little different. Everybody else around him was polytheistic. God made him an offer. He said if Abram left his home and his family of origin, then God would make him a great nation and bless him. So he got a promise of land and a promise of a blessing. Abram accepted the offer and he went off and uh, established a covenant with God, a contract. God promised Abram what is now the land of Israel for himself and for his descendants. And Abram had no children until his wife Sarai offered him her maidservant, Hagar, who bore Ishmael. That's a good idea. Yeah, it was not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> According to tradition. What could go wrong? <laughs> yeah, what could possibly go wrong with that? Yeah. So Hagar bore Ishmael, and traditionally he's considered the um, ancestor of the Arab nations. When Abram was 100 years old and Sarai 90, God promised Abram a son by Sarai and changed Abram's name to Abraham. So he went from, what is it, father of, um, to father of many. And Sarai went from my princess, is what Sarai means, to Sarah, which is princess, not the my. Sarah bore Abraham a son Isaac at 90 years old, <laughs> a name derived from the word laughter, expressing Abraham's joy at having a son in his old age. 
there's other laughter involved. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll talk about that. Isaac later married Rebecca, and in, in Hebrew that's Rivka. You might have heard that name in Jewish homes. Who bore him fraternal twin sons, um, Jacob and Esau. And we always say Jacob and Esau, but Esau was older. He was the first twin, Esau and Jacob. But Jacob was the one who inherited the blessing. When Isaac was growing old, Rebekah and Jacob tricked him. They deceived him into giving Jacob the blessing meant for Esau, the older of the twins. Esau got very angry about this and about the birthright that Jacob had deceived him into giving him earlier. So Jacob fled and lived with his uncle, Laban, where he met his beloved Rachel. Jacob was deceived into marrying Rachel's older sister, Leah, before he got Rachel. Um, and he also had Rachel and Leah's maidservants, sort of like Hagar, Bilhah, and Zilpah. Between these four women, Jacob fathered 12 sons and one daughter. So, that's a brief background. Any questions about that? I keep wanting to use this. It's easier for me to do that. <clears throat> questions about that brief history, because we're going to go into a little more depth now. Okay. Sarah. Our first scripture, Genesis 12. I'm going to go through Genesis 12, 10 to 20. Does anybody want to read this for me? I will read it. <clears throat> sure. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarah, Sarai, mm -hmm. I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. Oh, more. more. <laughs> the Egyptians saw that Sarah was a very beautiful woman. But when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and she was taken into his palace. He treated Abram well for her sake, and Abram acquired <coughs> sheep and cattle, male and female, donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife, Sarah. So Pharaoh summoned Abram. What have you done to me, he said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her to be my wife. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men. And they sent him on his way with his wife and everything he had. So why do you think Sarai allowed herself to be taken as Pharaoh's wife when she was already married to Abram? Women didn't have that right. Was it a, a tradition in that time? I mean, why would they have killed Abram because she was his wife? So that they Instead of us? killing him because she was his sister. <laughs> I had that question when I read that. And Sarah was his sister, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're getting to that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I wasn't planning to get to that, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, it wasn't exactly I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, this is getting more interesting. <laughs> well, she was his half sister. Half sister, half -sister. Yeah. yeah. She was his, she was his half sister. So, <coughs> anybody know the answer to that? The why why he would be killed if he if she were his wife rather than. Sister. Well, then that breaks the bond of, uh, of matrimony, mm -hmm. and she is then free. Yeah. Well, maybe it was so he would curry favor with Pharaoh and get all the donkeys and the cattle and the sheep and the goods, and that wouldn't happen if he was her husband. Yeah, they wanted, a, they wanted a, their own covenant, I think, Pharaoh yeah. and Abram. Um, Rulers in that day, they didn't see marriage as a means of sleeping with a woman so much as um, 
fulfilling their need for more power. Alliances. And Abram had power. He had stuff. And so that would make them related uh, of political alliance if they had that. At this point, had God and Abram made this covenant? Oh, yeah. Already? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so tell me this. Abram made a covenant with God. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a son by his wife, Sarah. Why didn't he... Like, yeah. Why did he go through all this like, at yeah, all? Cause it, didn't he trust God to keep them both alive? No, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> and so he what, really if Sarah really? had, what if Sarah had had a son by yeah. Pharaoh? Mm -hmm. Pharaoh. And how did Pharaoh been? find out that she was married? I, I think it said the... He saw them together, or somebody. Saw no, them. no, no. That's, no? That, that was that was, that's that was a son. different story. Mm -hmm. okay. We've had three of these to go. Through. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's easy to confuse. Yeah, I, I think that it was because they all got sick, right? They mm -hmm. all got yes. sick, and we were trying to find out why. And mm -hmm. eh, there was a confession involved. Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I think you're sick because um, I belong to somebody else. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm sorry, I'm reading my but, but it goes back to the power thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really does. It does. That's, that's the difference between being the husband and getting rid of him, uh, rather than if it was the, the brother. The brother has the right, or at least in the Arab countries that I know of, the brother has the right to give away a sister in mm -hmm. marriage. So God delivered them out of Egypt, and everything mm -hmm. seemed to be OK after that. Um, much wealthier. <laughs> yeah, they look much wealthier. Exactly. Exactly. So, anything more on that particular thing? Because, like I said, there are three more of these stories, but not right next. The next thing that happens is Sarah and Hagar, and I'm not going to read that. Have you read that whole thing? I'm hoping that you've read that. Um, those who were here last week, I, I gave assignments of reading, so. Um, why do you think Sarai gave Hagar to Abram? She's human. She got impatient. She didn't think that the, she didn't see how God was able to fulfill the promise because she was already way past the time. Yeah. So she thought, this sounds like a good idea, and <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was hers. I mean, Hagar yeah. was hers. So therefore, it would have been in her eyes through her line. Mm -hmm. Culturally, it, Culturally. Wasn't, it wasn't as weird as it sounds to us now. That's right. <laughs> and if, I, if I was 90 years old and was told I'm, I'm expected to have a baby, yes, <laughs> I'd be giving money to <laughs> 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 Right? Talk about <laughs> <laughs> How does this make you feel about Sarai, though? Does it make you kind of think she was a woman who lacked faith? Well, they clearly both did. Yeah. Bingo. Um, and, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Can you even imagine doing such a thing? Uh -uh. <laughs> I can't really either. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, you can watch The Handmaid's Tale, read the book, and yeah, yeah, yeah but, it doesn't work out. But it. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it. A lot of people today, though, that have surrogate mothers. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. I mean, it's a she's just actually a surrogate mother. Right. right. And does Sarah? plan to raise the child herself? Yeah. Probably. It may, I'm going to say that Hagar was going to carry the child, but Sarah was going to raise it as her own. It didn't say that, but yeah, it and might it have been. It didn't really work out that no, way. It didn't work out that way. Yeah. But, uh, Interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, that well, that's she really didn't, oh, take, right, no, she didn't really take Ishmael in. Mm -mm. Right. No. Huh. Interesting. We're going to have a whole class on barren women, mm -hmm. but certainly childlessness was a tragedy in those days. That was just considered the worst thing. Um, so that's another thing, too. It, mm -hmm. it kind of gives her a child mm -hmm. and takes away some of that shame. I think. Well, it was viewed as uh, being the result of sin, mm -hmm. childlessness. It was viewed as being the result of sin, mm -hmm. uh, being childless. So, yeah. More like the blind man in your sermon a couple weeks ago. Yeah, was it sinned. you or your parents who sinned that made yeah. you blind? Right. How many of you barren? Yeah. Sin. 
Any, th any thoughts about the name change from my princess to princess? Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a comment on that except that I did find it interesting my reading this time through it that, they, that God didn't actually do that until Abram was 99 years old. Mm -hmm. And then within a year, he, you know, yeah. he, was, uh, he had a son. Yeah. But, it, um, but I hadn't caught that. that Timing. Yeah, boy. they were Abram and Sarai. And right up until right up right until eighty nine. Yeah. Okay. The uh, uh, Sarai would be um, my princess, denoting her effectively <clears throat> belonging to Abram. Sarah is a universal. Yeah. Uh, sort of like Eve being the mother of all. Yeah, living right? things. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's what I think. My opinion. We're right. <laughs> <laughs> Genesis 18, 1 to 15. This is another long reading. Anybody want to <laughs> jump sure. in real? Oh, great. Good. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Gen uh, yeah, Genesis. Okay, guys. <laughs> the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre, where he was, while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seahs of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice, tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's the Okay. One. So, laughter. <laughs> I kind of like that. These guys are laughers. Um, where is your wife, Sarah? I think that's interesting. Here she is in a tent, not serving. It's possible that she had gotten her period again. That's a thought. <coughs> oh, that's something I read and I thought, I never thought of that before. <laughs> but she couldn't, then she couldn't be with the men. Mm -hmm. But she was kind of participating in the background. And that comes into the next story in Genesis 20. Oh, wait. Huh. In Genesis 20, when Abraham gives Sarah away to another powerful man, Abimelech, right? Mm -hmm. you, you read that part. Mm -hmm. Yes? I, maybe, I, maybe I missed something, but didn't Sarah and Abraham change their names after they had a son? No, no. it was before. Just it before, was, though. Mm -hmm. It was before. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So... We're not reading the Abimelech story either, but that's the <laughs> second time that Abraham identifies Sarah as his sister, not his wife. So I'm thinking, this must be a regular custom. <laughs> <laughs> when they go to unfamiliar places, they just say, this is Sarah, my sister. Materially, it worked out very well for him the yes. first time. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Um, everywhere we go, Let's say, you're my sister. That's what he said, so that's what they did. It resulted in kind of a disaster, although, as you say, material, it went well the first time. 
They, they escaped, though. They escaped with their lives. And we can't rule out the possibility that he has used it successfully elsewhere. Um, so we just don't know why. We don't know. For the, um, for the, in this instance, though, the deception isn't central, but the results are Abimelech doesn't sleep with Sarah. Mm -hmm. We know that for sure. With Pharaoh, we're pretty sure he slept with her. But Abimelech doesn't. Um, the famine and Abraham's being drawn, uh, driven out of the land of um, the Pharaoh is just a significant obstacle as the apparent loss of Sarah. All the factors combine for jeopardy to that covenant that Abraham has with God. So this passage with Abimelech, there's no famine. There's no famine. Um, and they're not even outside of the land of Israel at this point. But the most significant difference is to be found in the timing, unlike the prior occasion I said, when Sarah was barren, Sarah now is fertile. We know that. Because she's going to have a son born in the next year. <laughs> so, yikes. She's not obviously pregnant, or she wouldn't have been taken as the sister. But if Sarah spends even one night with Abimelech, the question of the paternity of the child mm -hmm. would be, a thread. So this is a very different issue. In chapter 12, Abraham was in danger of losing his wife. In chapter 20, now, he's in danger of losing claim to the heir, since he would not definitively be the father. So we're reminded that God <coughs> is the one who closes the womb and opens it. And in this way, the story sets the stage for the birth of Isaac in the next chapter. There are also connections to the previous chapter as Abraham observes that he believes there is no fear of God in the place. So nobody, nobody trusts God except for Abraham and Sarah. So we didn't, there's this impact of the wicked on the just, and we see that in the story of Lot, which we're not talking about at all. Um, he was a resident alien in Sodom and tried to impact the population there, totally failed. Abraham is an alien in this place, Gerar, and he considers the king and the population beyond his influence, and so he submits and says Abraham, Sarah is his sister. So, instead of being the righteous one bringing grace and deliverance, Abraham nearly brings destruction to the innocent. Now, this may not be an intention to criticize Abraham, it shows that God is able to carry out his blessing program even when Abraham can't see how it will be done. So, <clears throat> that is our story. I have a question, show my ignorance again. But who were the three men? Mm -hmm. Could you repeat uh, the question, please? Who were the three men? Who were the three men? Two angels and God. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees. He looked and, up and Abraham saw, saw three, men. three men. So it had to be the Lord. <laughs> and angels? I don't know. Does anybody does anybody have a better understanding than that? No, that makes sense. Well, I was kind of thinking, and it's ridiculous. Here's three men announcing to Abraham that he is going to have a son. And we, in the New Testament, we have three wise men. Oh. Never says that there it were never three, says there were three. wise men. <laughs> never says there were three. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But, no. I, it, it, is there some sort of a carpenter to? I don't think so. No, probably not. But <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know why it was three. But there you have it. It's all we know. But he just said that's who he was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he heard Sarah laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and and he read her mind. Yeah, because she laughed to herself. And yes. and um yeah, and her her thoughts were in her head. Why did Sarah she um laughed to herself and she thought. And then he says, Why did Sarah laugh and say? So he heard her, but she didn't say anything out loud. By the way, it does say that at the beginning of that chapter, or the chapter 17, that it was the heat of the day and Abram was sitting at the door of the tent mm -hmm. and Sarah was inside. So it must have been pretty hot. Yeah. 
You don't you don't sit out in the heat of the if you're if you're in Palm Springs in the summer you don't sit outside <laughs> in the sun you sit no. inside the house where it's cool and that's what the tents did. Great. Abraham and, and in the story of Lot that we're not covering, it goes on to tell what the what the men oh, angels yeah. did. So we know right. that they were angels. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Them. It goes on, doesn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Belva. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> so moving on. Oh wait, I'm not quite there yet. Abraham bought land when Sarah died. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Now, he was promised this land. He had to buy it, though. Mm -hmm. Abraham's payment was probably exorbitant. He took the first offer, right? Mm -hmm. And he refuses the offer to receive the land as a gift because then the guy who was selling it, his heirs could reclaim the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, Abraham is likely anxious to pay full price because a discounted price could later um, be connected to family debt problems and allow heirs of Ephron to reclaim land and all that stuff. So, ah, so he, <laughs> don't pull it <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a laborer or an artisan at 10 shekels per year would not expect to make this much in a lifetime. So it was a really high price that he paid for it. Why do you think? He loved Sarah, <laughs> is that why? Or do you think it, that was just a, I want to have a piece of land? Well, they don't mention romantic love until we get to Rachel. Ah. You know, Rachel is, is where we first see the, the mention of romantic love. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would probably t be tempted to take that off the table. But he, he wept at her death, right? Well, yeah, but you can weep because you have so many shared memories together. You can weep because of so many so many different things. Uh, there can be a love that's not a romantic love, a phileo. Mm -hmm. um, that, uh, but you don't typically give the one that you are romantically involved with to other men. There you go. I hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unless you're filled with great fear. Yeah, really. Yeah. Or yeah. want stuff. Yeah, want stuff. <laughs> or all of the above. <laughs> Why is Sarah's story important to us? Why, why is she in the Bible? She's listed as a great woman of faith in Hebrews. Yeah, mm -hmm. she is. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Well, it's not stated directly, but what impact did she have on Isaac? Because she did raise Isaac. Mm -hmm. And his name is Laughter, referencing I believe <clears throat> this chapter yeah. mm -hmm. or this for it to be. Yeah. 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 Abraham and Sarah, I think, were real partners. I do. I think that she goes along with his decisions. She doesn't complain. They react similarly with laughter. They do. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that's one thing that we can see about their relationship, their partners. It is different from Isaac and Rebecca. It is. She's the matriarch that God chose. God clearly said, I'm not choosing Hagar, I'm choosing you, you know? He knew her, he called her by name, he changed her name. So I think that's, I think that's significant. She is important as matriarch. Rebecca, oops, yes? Go, oh, please. Seemed like in many cases though she was sort of a source of conflict yeah. Well, well with Hagar, well, it's because definitely. of her that Hagar was cast out with her son mm -hmm. because Sarah said, I don't want her living here right. anymore. And uh, yes, also there was a source of conflict because they agreed that she was a sister and not the wife. And so there was conflict there the, with the man that she was given to. The and thing with Hagar, though, reminds me that Abraham went along with her decision there. Right. You know, I had said she followed his decisions, but that in that case, mm -hmm. she wanted she wanted Ishmael gone, and Abraham said, "Okay, hey, do what you want." But God told him to do that. God told him to to follow her decision. I don't remember that. Yeah. Sorry. Do what your wife mm -hmm. tells you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you repeat the question, please? <laughs> Just for the. Um, 
source of conflict? Oh, that wasn't a question. Sorry. Well, it, uh, yeah, Barbara was saying that um, Sarah was also a source of conflict mm -hmm. in these stories. So yeah, and and that included Hagar, and it included um, the issue with the Pharaoh, mm -hmm. and. Um, I think I would have gotten rid of Hagar too if I was Sarah. Like under those circumstances, she must have been extremely protective of her, of her son. Yeah, no okay. kidding. You know, like don't come near him. You're nothing. Mm -hmm. you know, Hagar was nothing, and that her baby was nothing. Now this is. Uh, but God looked after Hagar too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just saying, if I was Sarah, I'd be somewhat jealous of having yeah. her if, if she was around. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But Hagar called God the God who sees me, because when she was kicked out, mm -hmm. he took care of her and Ishmael. So, yeah, it's kind of beautiful. Because there are all sorts of loose threads that God can tie together in beautiful ways, I think. So, Rebecca. Sometime later, Abraham was told, I didn't have you guys read this, Abraham was told Milka is also a mother. She has borne sons to your brother, Nahor. Uz the firstborn, Buzz his brother. I don't know how you say that. Uz, Uz, I don't know, Kemuel, the father of Aram, Kesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlaf, and Bethuel. Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. Milka bore these eight sons to Abraham's brother, Nahor. Aren't you glad I didn't ask one of you to read that? <laughs> um, so Rebekah and Isaac, our first cousins once removed. <clears throat> Abraham doesn't want to lose the grip he has on the land of Israel, which is very small at this moment. So he makes arrangements for Isaac to remain at home while a servant is set to, sent to fetch a bride for him. And he insists that his, Isaac's wife be chosen from among family rather than from the people of the land. It's, a, again, a covenant matter <clears throat> because he's not looking for somebody who worships Yahweh because there isn't anybody else who worships Yahweh, the, the one true God. But he does want a distinct family, somebody not intermarrying with others. Abraham's relatives, they're not monotheistic. They're, any more than the Canaanites were. Mm -hmm. Abraham was called out of a polytheistic setting, and this is about ethnic separation. At this early stage, intermarriage with the people of the land would risk assimilation. We don't want that. So, he sends his servant to find a wife. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything in my notes. So do you remember the story? Did you guys read it this week about mm -hmm. Rebecca? The prayer of Abraham's servant is considered an oracular prayer, oracles. You give them a yes or no question, and that's how you get to know what you're supposed to do. Um, it's something like throwing dice or the magic eight ball. <laughs> In Old Testament Israel, <coughs> the priest carried the Urim and Thummim, I don't know how to say that either, to use an oracular situation, should we go into battle? That sort of thing, yes or no. Abraham's servant has to be kind of creative in this regard and he devises this mechanism for finding the right girl. His yes, no question is a little more complicated. <clears throat> he says, will she give him a drink? And the expected answer to that would be, Yes. So he has to find something a little more unique. And he says, and this is way out of the range of expectation, she will she volunteer to water all his camels? So we already know he's brought like 10, right? Yep. A camel that's gone a few days without water can drink as much as 25 gallons. Mm -hmm. And when you're putting water, the, the thing down into the well, you're bringing up maybe three gallons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is a lot of drying she of water. Sorry. It might have been 80 to 100 times she had to lower that thing into the well and haul it up. So, this is kind of an unbelievable proposal. 
and that would indicate that God is working to override human nature because who's going who's gonna to volunteer that? You know, the guy asks for a drink and you say, oh, sure, and I'll water your camels too. It's crazy. <laughs> so she did it. Um, so there you go. That is how he found Rebecca. But Rebecca didn't conceive for 20 years and she wasn't his first wife. Go ahead. I was going to say camels, though, too, were a sign of incredible wealth. And for him to show oh. up with 10 camels, it could be ingratiating. Oh, so she might have thought, hey, rich man. <laughs> like Mercedes you were at the time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Maybe. So Rebecca didn't conceive for 20 years. So we got this whole string of barrenness going on. And it's handled differently. Who wants to read this section? It's only this screen, so it's not very long. Go ahead, Ted. It's a short one. It's a short one. <laughs> Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his mm -hmm. wife, Rebecca, became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other. The older will serve the younger. So, notice any differences? <laughs> Faith. Faith. Yeah. No Hagar. No Hagar. Isaac prayed. Anything else strike you from this passage? Well, it seems that from the outset, God wanted her to have a favorite and told her which one it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah, before he was even born. That's probably the first mention of a woman going to inquire of the Lord, though. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I was going. She, she went. The Lord spoke to Rebecca. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's... We don't know how he spoke, you know, with the, did she hear real words, did she consult an oracle, what? But she went to the Lord, to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord responded. I assume, too, that the older serving the younger would not be the natural order of that at all. Absolutely not. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. But we have a lot of that going on mm -hmm. um, in the Bible. It, it happens kind of on the regular <laughs> after this. But this is, this is pretty much the first. David was the youngest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, any other thoughts about this? Because I, I think it's pretty cool mm -hmm. that she, she went to the Lord because yeah. obviously she converted to monotheism after all this time. She, she joined Isaac and, and it was true belief. It wasn't just, I'm, I'm choosing, I'm, I'm following my husband's religion because I have to. She believed in God, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, she's also not coming like we do with our dump truck load of requests on how we want God to give us things. Mm -hmm. She's trying to understand what's going, what's on. going on. And yeah. she, her first idea is to inquire of the Lord. Yeah, good point. I like that, yeah. Yeah. And we, we're told in the New Testament, if you need wisdom, ask. And that's what she did. She went to inquire a little. Cool. So in chapter 26, which we're not going to read, we've got um, the whole wife-sister thing again. <laughs> With Rebecca. Now, she's his cousin. She isn't his sister. She is his cousin. Um, did you guys read that one, too? Um, so this scene unfolds differently. And this is the one where they see Isaac and Rebecca, mm -hmm. um, the, the guy. So the rationale for this is the same, though. It's, I want to protect myself, so tell me you're my sister. But Rebecca is not actually taken by the ruler, as Sarah had been. Um, and they discover the deception through not through any kind of divine revelation, but by seeing the affection, like you mentioned, Ted. Uh, there wasn't any plague or anything else involved. So it seems like the d danger has been decreasing through all of these accounts. The first time, you know, there really was, a, it was Pharaoh that you were deceiving, 
he had a lot of power. <coughs> it made him and his whole family sick. He could have been super angry and killed them, but he didn't. And then the next time, she didn't even have to go into <coughs> the guy. And for this one, um, not, not nearly as dangerous. So I, I, I wonder about that. Abimelech prohibits anyone from touching Isaac or Rebecca afterwards. So, and as a result of the <coughs> incident, first Pharaoh sent Abraham away, Abimelech gives gifts and freedom in the land <laughs> to Abraham, yeah. and now Abimelech gives protection to Isaac. So, that's what I got from that wife-sister deception. Anybody else get something else? Yeah. Well, only that it's very curious that, in, that both of the, these women, Sarai and Rebecca, were described as very beautiful. Right. Um, we don't get that from other, you know, I, I don't, I mean, maybe when, when, when Rachel comes along, she's also beautiful as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's a pattern here with, uh, with these two, that that's part of the fear. I don't, yeah, um, interesting. I mean, if, if they've been, Normal, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Run of the mill, you know. And there seems to be yeah. something. That, that it, there seems to be a point that, that they were beautiful. And maybe it was because they came from elsewhere. They were exotic, mm -hmm. you know, looking to to the people of Canaan. Oh. At this point, how rich Egypt? Yeah, but was they were Egypt. Egypt. Right, but they came. They they were came from from, from the land of. Or whatever, mm -hmm. and so they might have looked exotic to the people in Egypt or right. Canaan. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a question, Zane? Uh, yeah, at that point, how rich was Isaac? Was he? He would have been pretty rich. So <laughs> I could have con had contributed to that. Yeah. To he was being treated. That's true. Good point. So maybe his wealth helped his situation. <laughs> Good. We already talked about how Rebecca knew that Jacob would be in charge, right? And she clearly preferred Jacob to Esau. She helped trick Isaac into giving the blessing to Jacob rather than Esau. So that whole deception thing keeps coming up. I don't know if you've noticed this. Everybody's kind of tricky. And Rebecca is also the impetus for finding a wife for Jacob among their family, again, rather than from the locals. Now Esau had already gotten married. Twice. Mm -hmm. Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm disgusted with living because of these Hittite women, meaning Esau's wives. Yeah. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women of this land from Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. <laughs> <laughs> so Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him. Then he commanded him, do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go at once to Padam Aram, to the house of your mother's father, Bethuel. Take a wife for yourself there from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. Now, this kind of happened because Rebekah had tricked Isaac. Mm -hmm. And um, Isaac had learned about that. And, and Esau also had learned about it and was very, very angry at Jacob. And so she's like scared for Jacob's life and she needs to get him out of there. Mm -hmm. And so she says, he needs to go find a wife elsewhere. But again, it all works for the covenant thing that, mm -hmm. that Abraham had with God that got passed to Isaac and now was going to be passed to Jacob. He had already received that blessing. Mm -hmm. God works in mysterious ways, <clears throat> even through our weird deceptions. So, does the anyone problem. else ever wonder what God would have done if, 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 if they hadn't been deceiving? I mean, I think that God could have worked it out without I'm the deception, sure. but I don't know how, but yeah. I'm sure he could have. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, but, but I think that's, you're, you're bringing up a very beautiful point, that God does promise us a garland of beauty in exchange for ashes, mm -hmm. and some of those ashes are our sin. Yeah. Some of those ashes are our failures. Yeah. This isn't original with me, but um, I like thinking of our lives as kind of a tapestry mm -hmm. where we see only the back side of it and we see all the little strings hanging off. God can weave those things together and make it beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, 
use that in her book. Is that it? That, that's yeah. where I got that from? Because yeah. I've never read her books or anything, but somebody must have been quoting her and I got that. Yeah, she used to use them as a visual aid. Oh, wow. In her, yeah. in her meetings and switch them from one side to the other. Yeah. That, yeah. I, what? That really, I find that very moving that God can use our mistakes, our sin, mm -hmm. even. You know? So why is Rebecca's story important? Why, why is her story in, this, in our scripture? Well, she was clearly a woman of faith. Yeah. She was very clearly a woman of faith. And she gave the first, that I can recall, the first interrogatory from a woman to God in Genesis. I think so. Recorded interrogatory. Um, and, you know, you know in that- You take on Yeah, you know, that's, that's a good point. That's a very good point, but just God thinking... God approached Hagar, got it, yeah. and, and Rebecca approaches God. I think there's, a, there's something of a difference there, mm -hmm. but yeah. But to be able to even go in to give an interrogatory to a husband could be considered improper in this mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. And she's approaching the Lord God of the universe. And I think there's just incredible beauty there. I like that. Yeah, yeah she did have faith. There's something that Ted mentioned before. I think that there was a romantic love mm -hmm. between Isaac and Rebecca that we don't necessarily see in every um, mm -hmm. relationship described in the, in the Old Testament. But sometimes they worked at cross purposes, unlike Abraham and Sarah. Yeah. Um, you know, she deceived him. So, go figure. Everything I've told Glenda in my life has been the truth. I believe that. Good for you. <laughs> that was my out loud eye roll. I heard it. <laughs> I hear your eye rolls. <laughs> yes. I think another kind of significant thing is that Rebecca was right about Jacob. Isaac was not. Right. You know, Isaac had the blessing to give, but he would have chosen Esau. Exactly. And that wasn't, that wasn't what God wanted. What was it with the Hittite women? Why were they so horrible? I mean, well, the, why were the Hittite women so horrible to Rebecca? Well, for one thing, she comes from a whole different land. Mm -hmm. So oh, these, yeah, these, are, these are not, they don't, aren't culturally the same. They don't believe in the same God. And also, she did want Jacob to run away from Esau. Mm -hmm. So she, she might have been exaggerating here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it just, like just we're not worth loving. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I think it probably was culture difference. They were townies. They were well, yeah, and they didn't worship the one true God, and, and that might have been part of the problem too. So we can take a break now and come back, we've got like 10 minutes. Should we, should we say, yeah, 11 o'clock? Okay. Welcome Thank back. Oh. We're talking about Rachel and Leah now. Mm. Rachel and Leah are Jacob's first cousins. How wacky is that? Jacob is already 77 years old. No wonder Esau was already married, my goodness. But the instructions that he got um, were similar to those given by Abraham to his servant a hundred years ago, practically when Isaac was ready to marry. Um, the most basic concern again is ethnic, not spiritual. <laughs> um, if he had to marry a monotheistic Yahwist, he would die a single man. <laughs> there weren't any. Um, but he would need to marry someone outside of the land so that there wouldn't be this risk of assimilation. <coughs> the risk of assimilation. Uh, he marries someone in the family to solidify his family identity. And so he goes, there's this introduction at a well, and Jacob falls in love. But Jacob is tricked into marrying Leah first. So I shouldn't have Rachel and Leah, I should have Leah and Rachel, although he met Rachel first. And Rachel is the favorite wife. <coughs> but it's the unloved wife, Leah, who produces the firstborn child. Now let me see, what did I have here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
<laughs> when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive. That's a different sort of thing, right? He saw that she wasn't loved so. That doesn't seem like a reason, but there it is. He enabled her to conceive, but Rachel remained childless. Leah began, became pregnant, gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, because the Lord heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too, and she <clears throat> named him Simeon. Again she conceived, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, now at last my husband will become attached to me, because I have borne him three sons. So he was named Levi. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, this time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. So, Leah gives birth first. She gets four sons before she stops. <clears throat> the firstborn son will eventually be rejected as a result of his behavior, and we'll talk about that later. And it's clear from the names that she gave her sons that Leah is haunted by her inability to get love from her husband. Even affection, it sounds like, you know? Um, it's very interesting. There's a lot of tension involved, and there's jealousy, as each woman wants something the other one has. Leah has sons, Rachel has love. So, more conflict. But it's not an immaculate conception. No. Nope. the husband did care enough to sleep with her and get her oh. pregnant. Yeah, yeah, but uh, he. He clearly also showed his um, favoritism. Mm -hmm. And that gets him into trouble later on with his sons because mm -hmm. he picks Joseph as his favorite son. Wasn't there seven years between the two marriages? No, no. one Just week. No. <laughs> <laughs> one week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, oh, I, I have the wrong story then. No, 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 no you do. He had worked seven right. years and then another seven years, but the marriages happen like that. Yes. No, really? Yeah. The marriages yeah. were almost yes. immediate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah it's, it's he was an indentured yeah. servant. Just a second. Yes. <laughs> Just a second. Yeah, the, it was confusing because he was, he was tricked. He had already worked seven years. Yes. After that marriage, he got angry, and his, his father-in-law said, yeah, you can have Rachel if you work another seven years. He got Rachel right away. And then oh, had to work it off every next week. Mm -hmm. I was up. But I know in Sunday school they said it was worth it. <laughs> yeah. Seven years ago. Yeah. The first one, the second one, yes. before. Yeah. Seven years ago. Yeah, I, I thought that too. So, yeah, but I was just going to ask. It is Did she have all these seven children? <laughs> or before. four children before she married. He, he married. No, Rachel. Yeah, no. that's where I was going. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we were both wrong. <laughs> So here we are with another barren woman. They're everywhere because, uh, I don't know, it seems to oddly run in the family. How does that run in the family? <laughs> I think God's trying to make a point here. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Um, Abraham, he was fairly patient <laughs> and faithful. Um, Isaac was responded very well in faith. Um, with prayer, and Rebecca, Rachel gets angry and frustrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but even though she isn't loved, Leah kind of wins the situation. Why is it, why do you suppose we're so, it's so important that we know that Leah wasn't loved? What do you think? It shows a side of hope, um, and you can see that in the naming of the children. Um, she's hoping that every time she conceives, that maybe then I'll be loved. Hmm. It's so sad. It really is. Um, but, but, you know, there is a side of hope that doesn't disappoint. And um, she does, she is able to conceive, she is able to be uh, the first progenitor of the nation. Uh, right. in many ways. Right. And there's a beauty to that. My mother pointed out one time that 
Judah <laughs> was where the line comes. That's where that's where the Messiah came from. So, he, you know, yeah. they could have stopped with, <laughs> with well, Judah. Yeah, exactly. Um, Leah wins. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> That's my thing. Leah wasn't loved, but she won, basically, in terms of God. Well, and her sons loved her. Mm -hmm. Her sons loved her. Yeah. Um, that's an assumption, but usually, <laughs> usually there children. You go. Like, usually, children tend to love their mother. Mm -hmm, right. Um, and she uh, has. She had love, mm -hmm. and and uh, as as Barbara pointed out, she probably had affection from Jacob too, but it wasn't the same, yeah. and she was jealous of that. Jeff, can you repeat something you said? You said there's yeah. a side of hope that doesn't... Disappoint. Disappoint. Yeah, yeah, I mean she, yes, she's, she's disappointed that she's not receiving the love from her husband, but she has four uh, sons, and one can assume that the sons are going to be loving her. Uh, because most children tend to love their mothers, um, um, and so that's that's what I meant by that. There was, Is that a statement that we can take other pla other places? There's a side of hope that that doesn't disappoint. I don't remember the verse in the New Testament, but yeah. No, but for us as well. Yeah. For yeah. us now, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, and mm -hmm. maybe I should look. You know, if it is something that falls apart. Yeah. There's something good about it, something good in there. You know, us. and that's that's where I'm going to say, and it's one of the, the passages that I go back to a lot. Um, yeah, sometimes we have horrible things happen and we lose our dreams, etc., etc. But God does promise us a garland of beauty in exchange for the ashes of our broken dreams. Um, and usually, the more intense the loss, the more beautiful that garland of beauty will come. It doesn't come immediately per se. Um, you know, we ended up here and I'm having, I have the best job I think I could ever hope for because I couldn't get anything beyond an adjunct position in Atlanta. Uh, well, my heart was broken, you know, but now, you know, here. So, um, took a few years. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Definitely took we a few years. Many years left now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and God, God does resolve conflicts. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I, yes. I, I think that uh, everyone, Rachel and Leah, they have something. Right. But then if you see what she has, and I don't, I don't see what I have. I get very angry and frustrated. Because what if? What if Leo had been the only wife and she had born sons? Wouldn't she have been thrilled? I mean, sons were the big deal. Mm -hmm. She had four sons. She, she would have been content. But she saw how Jacob treated Rachel and she was jealous. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca was much more patient than Rachel because she had Isaac and she had his love. And mm -hmm. she didn't see. That's a really good point, Rosanna. I hadn't thought of it like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it, we always want what somebody else has, yeah. don't we? And, uh, and I think it happens in, in, in my life mm -hmm. but that I see what other people have. Yeah, comparing ourselves to other people is yeah. just, well, it's hell. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it's just yeah. awful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. Thank you. So what happens is Rachel is so distraught that she gives Jacob her servant, Bilhah. Yeah. So... Um, what could go wrong again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, she gave her servant Bilhah as a wife. Jacob slept with her, and she became pregnant and bore a son. Then Rachel said, God has vindicated me. He has listened to my plea and given me a son. And that's what we were talking about mm -hmm. with Hagar. That mm -hmm. why, why didn't um, Sarah react quite like this? Yeah, you know, like a surrogate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because of this, she named him Dan. Rachel's servant Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob, a second son. Then Rachel said, I have had a great struggle with my sister, and I have won. So she named him Naphtali. So Bilhah is the first one that uh, gets given to Jacob, and he gets two more kids. Then Leah 
When Leah saw that she had stopped having children, she took her servant Zilpah and gave her to Jacob as a wife. <coughs> and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, What good fortune! <laughs> so she named him Gad. Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, How happy I am! The women will call me happy. So she named him Asher. So <clears throat> There they are, in hot competition with each other and thinking that they're happy because other women bore children to Jacob. And Jacob just kind of goes along with all this. Just yeah, kind of, oh, okay, okay. if you insist. <laughs> I guess I will. So, Leah then becomes fertile again. <laughs> so, oh, and there was this trade for mandrakes. Did you, did you read that? Mm -hmm. There were mandrakes that are supposed to be, I guess, like an aphrodisiac or something or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and um, Rachel wants them and Leah has them and so she trades a knight with Jacob for that. And it brings fertility back to Leah rather than a child to Rachel. And so she bore Issachar and Zebulun. And finally a girl comes along <laughs> named Dinah and then Rachel's barrenness is resolved by God. God opens her womb. Despite the fact that the surrogate provision of Dan has theoretically provided her with a son. But she got pregnant again and she has Joseph. And that's the end of her public disgrace. So Rachel's barrenness is an issue that is resolved. But favoritism is never a good thing. No, it really isn't. Since Jacob has no shortage of sons, why is Rachel's barrenness such a big deal? What do you think? I'm going to go back to what I had said earlier. Culturally, barrenness was considered the result of sin. Mm -hmm. And so she would be looked on mm -hmm. at, with shame by okay. others. But also the natural child of the woman you love. Right. I think you're going to feel maybe a stronger bond there. Mm -hmm. And we know that this, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. and, that, yeah. Yeah, and that Joseph was Jacob's favorite. And that leads to more conflict and problems in the future. <clears throat> oh well. I think we see this today. So many people, very poor, continue to have children. And the reason is they get that undivided love uh, for the first few years. And oh, the from the child, they... yeah, yeah. I see what you mean, yeah. There's, that's part of it. I think maybe not in this country, but in, in other poverty-stricken areas, children are born to, to work, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And so that helps with that poverty issue a bit. Well, Rachel had one more son, Benjamin, and then she died in childbirth. Mm. Ironic. Mm. But there's one more thing about Bilhah. <clears throat> <coughs> oh, I want to. I want to. I'm going to read one verse that doesn't seem to apply here. But God said to him, "Your name is Jacob, but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel." So he named him Israel. So that explains what happens in this next verse. While Israel was living, that's Jacob was living in that region, Reuben, remember him, first son, went in and slept with his father's concubine, Bilhah. Oops, and Israel heard of it. So the firstborn son, kind of messed up. So that's how Leah won, really. Well, not how, but um, that's, uh, that's how Judah became the guy. Mm -hmm. Jacob was... Um, Joseph was Jacob's favorite son, but he, he got and he got a blessing, but Judah got kind of a bigger one in a sense. Mm -hmm. So let's read. Reuben, you are my firstborn. This is the blessing on <coughs> um, Jacob's deathbed that he gives, and he's gonna give a blessing to all twelve of his sons. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the first son of my strength, excelling in honor, excelling in power. 
Turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel, for you went up onto your father's bed and onto my couch and defiled it. So he doesn't get the blessing that gets passed on. Neither did the next two. Neither did the next two. Simon hmm. and Levi. And that was a story that involved Dinah, and they killed a lot of people that they shouldn't have. And a kitchen. <laughs> Pardon? And a kitchen. No. There was no kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> then, but we get to the fourth son. Can I feel easier? I knew I should have <laughs> called her Dina. <laughs> but I didn't. Ah, Judah, your brothers will praise you. This is the fourth son. Yeah. Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. You are a lion's cub, Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down. Like a lioness, who dares to rouse him? The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nation shall be his. There's the Messiah, mm -hmm. right in that blessing. How cool is that? He will tether his donkey to a vine, his colt to the choicest branch. He will wash yeah. his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darker than wine, his teeth whiter than milk. So, Judah is the leader. <clears throat> you look so confused, Sandy. <laughs> this is Leah's fourth son. Yes. Judah. Judah and... Was Leo the mother or her maid servant? No, Leah. 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 Yeah. And you need um, a flow chart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a spreadsheet. <laughs> Why did I not make a spreadsheet? <laughs> <laughs> So um, <laughs> King David comes from Judah's line. <laughs> yep. the, the name Jew comes from Judah. Um, that's, you know, um, 10 tribes of Israel were lost, kind of. And you know, Judah was one that was saved, Judah and Benjamin. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Judah, big winner. So we're glad that Rachel was the one most loved, but she wasn't any more than important to the story than that she was the one most loved. Well, actually... actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's the mother of Joseph. Right. Yeah, and Joseph was a big deal. He saved that whole family, remember? Yeah. He yes. went to Egypt oh, okay. as a slave. You yeah. know, he saved the whole family. So, yeah, he was very, very, very important. Okay. But not in, but the, but not in the messianic life. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's so confusing. Twelve sons. Oh, this is Joseph with many colors. Ishmael. Oh, yes. Thank you. I got that. All right. So these matriarchs are all complicated, <laughs> imperfect women. What did you learn about them from your studies this week that we haven't necessarily brought out today? Or even that we have, but you want to emphasize. Anything? <laughs> Nobody? Well, one thing that strikes me is that we think of this all as a patriarchal society and men are all powerful and so forth. There's a lot of stuff going on <laughs> just outside of the house. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> Women are important. Yeah. They're, they're a big deal in scripture. They're, yeah, they, they don't yeah. have the physical strength. They don't have the political power, but they've got... Opportunity. Well, one thing we didn't bring up today that I, when I, in my reading, I noticed that, um, for instance, when the, um, when he went to get Isaac's son, <coughs> no, <Squash. laughs> when the servant went to get the wife for um, Abraham, Isaac, yes, Isaac, <laughs> keep him straight here, um, she was asked by her father, do you want to go with this guy? Mm -hmm. I mean, she could have said, no, no, I think I'd rather <laughs> stay here, you know? I mean, he, she was yeah. asked. Yeah. We, 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 think of, we think of the father as saying, you must go with right. this guy because he's bringing me all these goodies. Mm -hmm. And he could have. And he could have. Yeah. But, she, but in that particular situation, that family situation, or maybe, I don't know, but but she was asked, yeah. and she yeah. agreed to, to go. Thank you for noticing that. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that. And yeah. she was really young, too. <laughs> she had to have been really young. I think it was, she was like 13, I think. But she was 
what younger than Leah by how much was it seven years? She was younger than Leah, and, yeah. and uh, Leah couldn't get married because she wasn't pretty enough, right? Or something. Yes. Um, one of the things that stood out that was incredibly sad to me is you hear the word beauty mentioned so much more than you do the word that translates as romantic love. Mm. Um, and it's uh, indicative of a very different uh, type of um, familial relationship than what we're used to now. Um, you know, are you going to come with me and then you meet the guy you're going to marry? Mm -hmm. You know, that's not like you know, a standard courtship. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, but even today, beauty is involved. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying yeah. that you know, if you count the number of times the word is used, yeah. beauty is used significantly more often than the word that we translate for romantic love. Other thoughts? So I was going to show you how to find us on line. Move this chair because I'm working backwards. Mm -hmm. So we are at litchapala.org. I thought I had a lot of windows open. Up. What? <laughs> nobody, has, nobody has more windows open than me. So LIT Chapala. Oh, that doesn't even show. How come no. that's not showing? <laughs> Cursor in the what? Search, Search box. box. No. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. I guess I have to do it this way. Is that one? No. It's, oh, it's on my screen. There you go. Oh, Here we oh, go. Wait, oh. wait. I have an idea. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> but wait, there's more. I want to know why Katura was not ever mentioned. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Okay. LITeachpala.org. Yeah. Then you go to current, current courses. courses, women in scripture. Oh, oh. Come on. There we go. Women in scripture. <laughs> this is so hard. Scroll down. Can I scroll back? Ah, there we go. And this is the this is the uh, video from last week, and I'm going to also post the syllabus, and we're videoing now. So you can see the video from this week if you want to review, but you probably don't need to do that. Um, but there you have it, liteachpala.org under current courses, mm -hmm. women in scripture. Or Romans if you want to, you know, mm -hmm. view that one. Yeah. There you have it. Any questions about that? I do have homework for those of you taking this for credit. Or even mm -hmm. and, and even if and if you're not, this does have the readings for next week. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.